And a Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland from Washington State uh, attended the president's speech. She joins us right now. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm really uh, thankful that at a time when America needs more hope, uh, President Biden did touch on that and unity in his speech. What was the part of his speech that brought you the most hope? You know, I would say the reminder of where we started and the progress that we have made in just over one year. Obviously, the tragic situation in Ukraine is on everyone's mind right now, but also a reminder of what we've come through as a nation. We've come through a pandemic. We are trying to get back to our regularly scheduled programming. The economy is strong. Unemployment is down. Wages are up. And there's so much that we need to focus on as well to make sure that we continue to deliver for the American people. And I think there's a strong reminder here that that when Democrats are in charge, the economy is strong. Small businesses are coming back. And so I think the message was about unity in the United States. You saw that the largest applause line happened when he talked about the unity that we have against Russia and its aggression, but also just reminding us of all the great things that this nation has to offer and how bullish he is on the United States. Well, you mentioned uh, the Democrats uh, being in charge, and that's when the economy is actually surging. The GOP response uh, pointed to the fact that the president, uh, and, and I, I must note, the, the governor of Iowa, Kim Reynolds, she actually was among a number of states, Iowa was among a number of states that sued President Biden for the vaccine mandates. Were Democrats finding that maybe they needed to talk to their constituents more about what was needed during this very difficult time of the pandemic? It's an interesting situation that took place in the United States during this pandemic. Typically, when we have national crises, we unite as a nation. And sadly, the safety and health and well-being of American citizens became a political dividing rod. It became weaponized. And so right now, you know, we have done everything we can to get as many vaccines in the arms of the American people. And we've done that. We are resuming our normal activity. And so the lawsuit is frivolous and unnecessary because at the end of the day, it is the health and safety of the American people that we must always put forward. First. You sit on the House Armed Services Committee. The president's speech uh, a lot more about pain to be inflicted on Putin than peace. It did have a lot of heart, a lot of passion. The Russian military, though, is famously vast. How confident can Americans be that our help will be enough to lead to a Ukrainian victory? What's amazing in all of this is just the strength and the resolve of the Ukrainian people. They are not giving up. They are not going to stop fighting. And instead of rolling over and being bullied by Russia and a president who is aggressive and not necessarily caring about his own people, let alone people in Ukraine, you know, we're going to keep moving forward with them. And so I think that, you know, the path that we are taking, I know that there is a loss of life and it is hard to watch and we are with the Ukrainian people. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we preserve democracy. The NATO allies are together. The European Union is together. We are getting support from around the world. And right now, Russia's economy is in big danger. It was never strong to begin with, but these economic sanctions are going to have a profound impact on their economy. Congresswoman Strickland, thank you so much uh, for making time for us this morning after, I'm sure, what was a very long night and a very busy day today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.